topic of subject is P and ID. How do you prepare a P and ID? How do you read a P and ID? A basic uh, subject, a foundational level, of course, but still worth refreshing for all seniors who are present here and for all the youngsters who are new to reading P and ID. Today, uh, 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 the topic is being taken by Mr. K. Shivakumar. He is a chemical engineer with over 15 years of experience in oil and gas industry and with exposure to petroleum refinery units in his commissioning, in his operation, revamping a petroleum and gas industry planning, digitization, data analysis, process design and engineering, and LNG regasification terminal operation. So a very well-versed uh, engineer who is presently working as lead process design engineer in iFluids Engineering Chennai. And I'm not sure how many of the participants here are aware of the various interesting YouTube uh, uh, topics that iFluids Engineering have posted in the YouTube. If you have find time, please go through search iFluids and then check on the interesting uh, topics that are dealt with there. It would be quite uh, uh, very informative and knowledgeable for all of us. So I hope to this uh, video also is being recorded and will be posted for the benefit of people who are not able to attend or want to refresh later. But P and ID, uh, how do you read a piping and instrumentation diagram? Is one of the most basic skill required for chemical process engineer. And uh, today's topic hopefully would provide a background or, or a starting step to so uh, taking it to the level two after attending all the uh, this program today. A warm welcome to Mr. K. Shivakumar for being with us today. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that you will have your own other preoccupations there who have kept aside and being with us today to take this session. On behalf of NSE Kerala chapter and HSE forum, a warm welcome, Mr. Shivakumar. Thank you, sir. And thank, I, you. thank you, most welcome. Uh, and is also uh, welcome all the participants who are present here. Uh, we have 42 participants today. Last one week, we have been conducting various sessions. We have got a tremendous response, 45 to 155 participants, to, depending upon the sessions, topics, and, and the, the kind of interest that are generated. Today also is no less. Uh, so thank you. I think your encouragement, your participation, what makes us uh, go forward identifying topics of interest and posting in the webinar series. Also request a feedback uh, to us in, through the chat box on future topics that we can take it up on webinar or a physical session. Uh, you can also tell us whether you want a physical session or a webinar also, depending upon your convenience. So having set the context, I now request Mr. Shivakumar to take over. We will have a question answer session at the end of the session. And then if you have any difficulty, you can post the question on the chat box or you can unmute and Ask the, ask the question directly once the session is over. So I now request Mr. K. Shivakuma to take over the session. Over to you, Mr. Shivakuma. Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome uh, all uh, for this session. So. so uh, Preparation and reading of P and IDs. So in this session, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, uh, what a P and ID is, how P and ID is different from uh, other uh, process schematic drawings, and what makes the crux of P and IDs. What is what information does a P and ID have, and how P and ID is used in the plant. So uh, these are the things which we'll be discussing uh, uh, in this session. So now. Uh, what is P and ID? It's piping and instrumentation drawing. It's nothing but a graphical representation of any process unit. So uh, it has uh, all the details in it. What uh, process unit uh, uh, must have. It has the flow flow directions of the fluids, whether it's process utility or fire water. It has pipeline with appropriate tag, including size, material of construction and insulation. Instrument with tag numbers, their purpose. It's whether it's for a flow measurement, pressure measurement, temperature analyzer, and also the basic control scheme, how we control that process. Then equipment with nameplate details. So pumps, compressors, columns, vessels, etc. All these 
what all the equipments in the unit in the process flow will be uh, presented in this uh, p and id and the nameplate details uh, not limited to its size design and operating conditions will also be given in the p and id so uh, p and id is, is the basis for uh, further engineering and construction so because you, in in the engineering workflow once p and id is completed from there inputs are taken for all these uh, all the uh, departments process and operation so mainly our startup procedure shutdown procedures cause and effect diagram all operational checklist drawings everything is based on p and ids so mechanical team will take inputs and they will be making data sheets for the walls isometrics and also insulation thickness is given in p and ids so instrumentation they will be uh, taking the control walls data shutdown walls what's the control scheme what logic they need to build behind so pnd forms pnd is the basic document uh, required so electrical team of course electrical machines are which are connected through the interlock will also be uh, appropriately captured in the pnid and also heat tracing requirements if it is electrically traced so all this information will be available in pnids so this is how a typical p and id looks so uh, this is a drain vessel you can see all the inlet and outlet of the vessels are clearly mentioned clearly shown uh, in this p and id and uh, you will also see the uh, protection devices its psvs connected pumps and also we will have the name plate details here so what is the name of the vessel what is the tag number what is the dimension what is the operating or design condition pressure temperature everything so everything is captured in, including the line numbers so this is a typical p and id we will be discussing in parts all these details so first before getting into it we have different process schematic uh, diagrams one is block flow diagram process flow diagram and p and ids so you, you can see the detail of the process is increasing in this order block flow diagram is only a block representation of the unit or a process segment or equipment in process flow diagram there will be stream numbers there will be no uh, walls isolation walls manual walls drains vents shown in this pfds so but piping and instrumentation diagram if you see it's a bit detail oriented it has all the inlet lines it has the control wall shutdown walls everything represented so uh, p and id will give the entire uh, detailed schematic of any process unit so preparing a p and id is one of the important steps in any uh, engineering following are the inputs for p and ids so first of all we need to finalize the process flow diagram which forms the basis for the p and id then uh, we'll have our design basis project design basis what are the design conditions how we are going to control what is the, what is the isolation philosophy and what's the vent and drain philosophy and what's the tagging philosophy then we'll have the material selection diagram which material is to be used for pipelines and equipments then we'll have piping material specification so uh, what does a p and id contain p and ids are used to convey the entire engineering details of the plant as we earlier saw they are substantially more complex as said they are not they are intended to give every line wall connections in the process whatever line is there in the plant it should be in the p and id or whatever line is in the p and id it should be in the plant for for any equipment nozzles vent drains blind flanges interconnecting lines everything must be clearly specified complete details of the interconnecting piping including line sizes all walls of different type will be using different type of walls and material of the pipe moc all process and safety instruments coming in the plant not limited to shutdown walls psvs dump walls etc with tag numbers are to be clearly specified in the p and id 
the basic control schemes including interlocks and shutdown systems the press, the sensing devices whether it's pt tt which initiates the shutdown and the final shutting down a, uh, walls or instrument has to be clearly specified and basic process control schemes <coughs> that is whether it's a split range it's a ratio control it's a cascade control everything needs to be clearly specified in the pnid so all relevant basic information that is required for the construction of the plant of course there are many informations which is required and few are not in the diagram some of them will be captured as a separate notes special notes uh, in the pnid we'll see that in due course first of all to make a pnid we need to define the legends legend will have all the piping and instrument abbreviations how we are going to what symbols we are going to use what abbreviations or what typical codes we are going to use everything will be given in the pnid legends this is the first pnid which will be made equipment symbols how to number the equipment how to number the instruments any general notes for the project everything will be captured how a analyzer should look how a compressor should look everything will be captured in this uh, legend so legend forms the basis for drawing the pnid so now these are uh, typical examples and not necessarily all the pnids will have the same uh, legends or formats so based on uh, different uh, countries or different uh, companies requirement uh, they will have their own uh, this naming or tagging philosophy so typically it will for a line sizing line uh, tagging it will have the line size what's the fluid service lp steam plan or unit number line number piping class insulation type so everything will be given in the line numbers so uh, these are the symbols uh, which are typically used in the pnid is pressure controller pressure indicator you can see for level alarms this is high alarm this is low alarm it's a controller it's a glass level indicating controller flow alarm flow element same for temperature and we have the different types of walls gate wall is represented like this globe wall check walls control walls plug wall all these are all these symbols are predefined so in legend pnid everything will be defined how a blind should look how is the instrument air line given in the pnid how is the elect electrical supply how is the pipeline represented everything will be clearly given so pneumatic signals electronic signals will be dotted lines hydraulic signals so various other data communications so the modes of whatever instrument mode or instrument uh, transmission signal transmission happening everything should be given in the legend and we will we'll follow the same for the entire project so these are typical symbols of the equipments centrifugal compressor axial compressor so rotary compressors so motors whether whether it is motor driven or turbine driven we can uh, see from the pnid itself so reactors how are typically reactors different reactors are uh, given furnaces and boilers so pnid so no typically pnid drawings uh, are numbered in the order of processing it just starts with the feed ends with the product for any process unit following are the main parts included in pnid drawing number and the details of the project so this becomes easy for anyone who is new to identify and for future also if you have the drawing number any changes can be easily updated so pictorial representation of all the equipments we saw that all the equipments how it is shown in the legend whatever is in the legend will be using the same uh, pictorial representation details of all process and utility piping details of 
all the instruments and control schemes. All safety shutdown requirements. Process and design parameters like operating pressure, temperature, mechanical design conditions. What is the maximum pressure it can withstand? Everything is to be indicated in that equipment. Process notes, special uh, mentions like critical piping, uh, any special control is required, any safety precaution is to be taken during normal operations. All the things are to be clearly captured in process notes. And what happens? Few equipments will be vendor provided. So we should be clearly mentioning the interface. So this is our scope and this is vendor scope. So it should be clearly mentioned uh, for uh, smooth commissioning and uh, construction. Any pending information or whenever there is a doubt. So uh, we don't know there is a slight change in the process conditions. There is a requirement for change in process conditions and we are not sure. And if you want to release the preliminary P and IDs, all these uncertain parameters or uncertain condition are to be mentioned with hold. It's hold for that revision. Maybe in future revisions we'll be updating. So now we have seen uh, till legends. Now a typical P and ID. We'll see uh, to uh, with respective equipments. What are the details are to be provided? Whatever equipments are installed, it should be shown. Normally we'll be showing the dimensions, but uh, scaling is not done in P and IDs. Skirts for column reactors vessels are clearly mentioned and it's shown. So this is for vessels and separators. So vessels and separators we know we have for a different purpose. It may be a surge vessel. It may be an oil water separator. It may be a gas oil separator. So the name of the vessel details of its internals. Are to be clearly shown in P and IDs. All the nozzles are to be clearly identified and sizes are to be mentioned. All the instrument thermo wells, sample connections, vents, drains, flanges, blinds, relief walls, including size and set pressure are to be mentioned. Notes regarding the internal coatings. You want any special corrosion, anti corrosion coatings to be given if, if for it being a corrosive environment. It has to be clearly mentioned in the note section. All the level instruments and the level control system, everything is to be given clearly in the P and IDs. Now we'll see a typical vessel in a P and ID. So here we here we can see there is an inlet diverter that is an inlet device. We have a mist extractor. We have oil water separator here. So uh, we have an interface level measurement. There we have a controller controlling the level. So we have this inlet wall. We have this outlet wall for gas. We have a separate oil oil draining system. So if this is a typical thing and uh, and of course the vessel dimension will also be given in the P and IDs. Heat exchanger, the heat exchanger shield symbol shall be shown as per TEMA. All inlet house and outlet nozzles shall be marked clearly. In nameplate details, we'll specify the heat duty operating conditions, pressure temperature. So we know air coolers. The actual number of banks of air cooled heat exchangers. How many banks does it have? How many fans are there in uh, air coolers? And whether it is supported with lowers or not. Everything has to be indicated on the PNID. Heat exchanger, if you see. This is the tube side and this is the cell side. We have this. Both the fluids in a heat exchanger have their own isolation and bypass. Bypass arrangement should be clearly mentioned for taking the machine, take, taking the equipment offline for uh, maintenance. Typically air coolers, 
we have these inlet walls, outlet walls, blind flanges. Blind flanges will be provided for such equipments because for enabling, for facilitating maintenance. So vent wall, drain wall, everything is given for draining and purging the process fluids in case of any maintenance. <coughs> in FinFan coolers, in addition to this, we'll have this lowers. These are mainly to adjust the airflow. And whether that is auto operated or manually operated, that has to be clearly specified. Then we'll have compressor. Compressor should have the capacity and power, suction knockout drum, anti-surge walls, capacity control system, suction and discharge instruments, local control panel, signals to local control panel, seal flush systems and loop oil system. Everything will be mentioned in the PNID. Seal flush loop oil, if not if, if not mentioned in PNID, we'll be giving reference of the vendor PNID, package PNID. So we will be referring that for further details. Here you can see compressor entire system is represented, including the pressure safety wall. So, so this is the typical compressor uh, PNID. Pumps similar to compressor will have everything. We'll show the recycle lines, drain lines, suction and discharge instruments, local control panel, seal flush details. And typical pump nameplate will have this capacity, head develop, what's the speed, motor rating, manufacturer, and what is the MOC, material of construction. So all these are to be clearly captured in PNID. So uh, flare system. PSVs, wherever we have PSVs, along with it, should, along with set pressure, it should be clearly mentioned in PNIDs. Flare systems, capacity of flare, height of the stack, sensing instruments, type of the flare, whether it's for acid gas, LP, HP, Everything should be clearly mentioned. And the gas seal type, velocity seal, molecular seal, whatever type of seal we are using, that has to be clearly mentioned. And if required, that has to be given in a separate detail. So, uh, in process plant, whatever we have, whatever uh, lines, equipments we have, everything will be captured in the PNIDs. Because um, PNID plant, they both PNID and actual plant, they need to be same. So then this, uh, it's a tip, this is a uh, requirement, a winterization protection. Normally what happens in cold countries or in cold climate, uh, so the process fluid may uh, conceal. So if the flow is not adequate or if the ambient temperature drops below its uh, pore point, if there is no insulation, then if the pipeline is exposed, then there will be ceasing of the flow. So this bare piping in which liquid is likely to coagulate within 12 hours after stop of the liquid this should be hot insulated. So hot insulation is to be provided so that outside ambient temperature doesn't affect the process. In addition to that hot insulation, maybe hot jacket, hot water jacket, steam tracing or even electrical tracing to keep the line warm in flowing condition is to be provided. And of course, at times we provide this for gas lines also to prevent any condensate accumulation or condensate formation. All these things has to be clearly mentioned in PNIDs.
not stopping there there are few more things uh, which needs to be addressed slope requirement of the line so as we rightly said there will be no elevation there will be no scaling in p and ids so any requirement towards low point drain or if you want to give a slope towards that equipment to prevent any accumulation you need to clearly mention slope direction in that line in that line spacing of the instruments at times you may need to place your instruments at least 5d 10d from the bends or any turbulent areas that is to be clearly mentioned and also we may use some bypass lines from recycle lines only for startup and that has to be indicated these are normally flow lines n and f or line used only for startup such things are to be mentioned location of blinds which is very important and positive isolation requirements that is a typical block and bleed arrangement and in that if you are using a very hot fluid there should be a bypass for warming up the entire line so all these are to be captured in p and ids walls which are to be locked open and locked closed so for operation we might be requiring some walls to be kept closed and some walls, some walls to be always kept open psv downstream walls are always kept open and based on the standby requirement psv upstream walls are open or closed so such things are to be clearly captured in the p and ids and safe route of the vents and providing mesh in the vent to prevent any external birds kind of thing getting into the vent and blocking it so such things are also to be mentioned now now that we know uh, what details are to be put into the p and id so we'll just go through how to read a p and id so uh, of course now it's a bit easy because we have already seen uh, what are the details and what are the significance of the each and every detail in the during the pnd uh, making session so now in addition to all the above discussed special focus is required to the below so once all the pndds are released we should be always using whether it is for engineering or in normal operation always use the latest version for reference so because any changes if not updated that's going to misguide us and that may lead to problems and difficulties so take the p and ids to the field and trace the lines for better understanding this is typically for people who are in operation and maintenance not for engineering and construction so once you have the p and id please go to field and trace the lines with the help of p and id and that p and id should be the latest version so this is how the uh, p and id document control section looks like so it will have the revision date revision number and initials of the person involved in that engineering revision so we'll have the company name we'll have the engineering contractor name so what is the project and what is the description of that pnd id it might be a crude column pnd id it might be a desalter pnd id application section p and id so everything is to be clearly mentioned and p and id number corresponding to that description and number of sheets there might be more than one sheet and that is to be clearly mentioned now this is one thing where uh, many of us ignore because we see only the lines and equipments and we'll directly jump to the next p and ids we'll follow the flow path that must that, that must not be done so each and every p and id will have a note section and all the notes must be clearly understood while studying the p and ids because each and every note will have a engineering significance or a safety significance so everything will be covered in the notes for example field to blind connection connection for used oil vessel drain and 
This being a revamp, complete re-spooling of lines may be required to tie in new lines into the pipe rack because the unit has gone for a revamp. Now, during engineering, we have found that new tines are to be added to the existing line and that spool requires a modification. So this will be a input for mechanical team. You find that there are two, three tappings coming from that same location, near to that same location. So that's the demand. We have added external, you another new equipment where that equipment is also drained towards this pool. Then you might feel, no, there will be some re-spooling of this area. So those are things we need to capture in p and ids Then while executing the job also, we need to be clear about this. Pipe should be free of pockets and stagnant areas. There might be H2S or corrosion related issues. Wet H2S corrosion related issues. So designer has given there should be no stagnant areas. Line should be sloped. So it should be free of pockets. There the liquid should not get accumulated in the pipeline. So all these nodes must be clearly understood. So these nodes will also further enhance our understanding regarding the unit operation, hazards involved in the unit operation, and what are the engineering controls we have. So once we have, once we know this, our operation and maintenance of the unit will be much better. It will be much efficient. And we should be careful with the spec breaks. Normally what happens, our process lines will be of different grades. So what we'll do, we'll give process line might be SS, but utility line may be a nitrogen purge line, which we'll be using only during the shutdown. Once after shutting down the process, need not be of SS. So we'll provide a spec break here. We'll provide a blind positive isolation. Till that it will be of higher grade and after that it will be of lower grade. So this also to be clearly mentioned where the spec changes. So in PNIDs, we should be very clear about isolation of the equipments, location of the wall, blind, drain, how to bypass the equipment where the purge connections are given. Everything is to be clearly understood and read. Control scheme. What is the type of controller we are using? Whether it's a split range, whether it is a ratio controller, whether it's a cascade controller, everything is to be understood. And as you know, legends will help us in understanding the P and ID better. Startup override, whether it is given in startup override for this particular tag, instrument tag, is there any ESD associated with this instrument tag? Suppose if there is a ESD associated with this PT or FT, that is to be clearly mentioned. If not mentioned, what happens? In, in case if it is given for maintenance and someone isolates, second, that consequent trip will act. So everything has to be clearly specified. And bypass of control walls. Wherever bypass is provided, bypass has to be clearly mentioned in PNDs, and we should understand and know the bypass wall, location, everything. So now we'll just see a typical P and ID. So we have a crude inlet here. It's a, it's a separator. So you see the man ways are also shown. You see the insulation of the vessel is shown. Then we have this level control systems. LG is there, LT is there. We'll see the gas. It's a separator where uh, gas and liquid is separated. We have this gas outlet. So line size is mentioned, line number is mentioned. We'll have the control wall. This control wall takes input from this PT, which is in the next P and ID. So you have the shutdown wall. 
in case of any emergency or any uh, eventuality high pressure something like that this will close this will prevent this gas from entering into the system then we have the pressure safety wall psps are there so you see psp discharge is routed to flare that is shown we can see the slope do not pocket so all the things are clearly mentioned in pndids and of course the drain also is clearly mentioned where the drain goes where the outlet goes and how the outlet flow is controlled level is controlled with the help of this lt so we have a special notes here so below 250 m ms cft of gas flow only two loading pumps can run simultaneously all manual valves this is significant to that process anyway we are not going to discuss the entire process all manual valves shall be prefixed by this so before this we'll have this number vent should be located at high point and general notes this drawing is for construction and this refer this drawing for demolition wherever reference whatever reference we are using that is also to be clearly mentioned and one more thing is that cloud so whatever is in our scope change scope that has to be clouded so this is for easy identification so until if until you we do not cloud this we don't know whether it's changed or not so that has to be clearly mentioned all the instruments instruments are having their respective tag so all this it becomes it's like the blueprint of the entire plant so all these informations are to be captured in the pndis pndi has everything what the process plant actually requires now we'll see we'll just recap what uh, we have gone through this session so pndi shall include the following it means that we need to understand each and every aspects of this pndi latest revision with date and scope or changes clouded or highlighted so latest revision we should be using only the latest revision process flow with flow directions of the fluid so arrow marks will suffice the requirement equipment name plate details right from fire details distillation columns pumps compressors each and every equipment vessels every equipment will have its own tank numbers and name plate details piping size class specification breaks as we mentioned all the instrumentation including control scheme and shutdown systems which is very very important because based on this only instrument uh, team will develop the logic diagrams everything so all the equipments with isolation and bypass walls these are to be shown because our normal operating procedure for each and every equipment for taking it in line bypassing taking handing over for maintenance we need we will be making a procedure and that procedure will be based on the pnid which wall to close which wall to open when to open all this information will be given in the procedures and pnid forms the basis for that lock open lock close walls slope vent drain wherever cleaning is required removable spool shall be provided and that detail has to be mentioned in the pnid and we should understand that for our normal operation and maintenance vendor packages and what is the scope of the vendor from where the vendor package starts from which flange vendor package starts that has to be clearly mentioned insulation and tracing tracing details that is winterization requirements that has to be clearly mentioned and of course special instructions captured in notes section appropriately all these instructions notes are to be understood and this is how uh, we uh, make pndid and uh, uh, we uh, should read understand pndids 
thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, the floor is now Please. open for question answer session uh, or you can post your questions on the chat box if you have any questions uh, somebody has raised the hand pravid pk yeah can you unmute and post your question Yes, yes, flange rating. Sir, what happens? Flange rating not mentioned there. Yes, flange rating will be a part of your uh, uh, line number itself, sir. We'll have uh, in pipings in PMS piping uh, specification document. We'll be having different codes for different uh, metallurgy. So in that everything will be captured appropriately. Sir. Okay. Any other questions? Participants are encouraged to either unmute and pose a question or you can straight away post your doubts on the chat box. Please explain about clouds one more time. There's a request from Susindran Shukumar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. What happens? So, why we have clouded this portion is we have installed a new valve here, and this piping we have changed as a part of the modification. So, we have increased the line size. You may see here from one inch to four inch. So, this is the modification which we have done. So, if you don't provide this cloud, we don't know whether it has been modified or not. So for for any uh, construction, any revamp activities, so wherever changes are made in the existing plant, these clouds are used because only one part we have modified, other parts we have not modified. So that's the reason, sir. This is for clear understanding. What is the scope of modification? For that only we are using this cloud. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, uh, system color code uh, is not uh, captured in PNID, sir. It, uh, it's a more of safety thing. So that will be uh, part of our safety procedures. PNID symbols, sir, I normally, use... yes, PNID symbols are used from which standard? PNID symbols, sir, normally uh, each and every uh, company will have their own uh, legends, sir. So there will be slight changes and based on the company's requirement, we will be using them. As such, there is no uh, standard. It's, uh, st there are only guidelines. So as such, uh, whatever symbol the client prefers, they have their own uh, uh, symbols and legends. We will be using the same for that project. Thank you message from Shivang Bolanath. Thank you for detailed explanation of inclusion of relevant parameter indications of PNID. Thank you, Shivang. Another question from Mr. Kumaresh Alagura. For example, if there are two vessels placed nearby or don't know whether it is placed one above the other or placed side by side, can we identify by looking at the PNID? Not exactly, sir. Not exactly until otherwise mentioned. If it is exchanger, stacked exchangers, if it is a stacked vessel, it will be mentioned. If there are nearby vessels, if they are placed side by side and in the side, if it is in the top, uh, that we will not be knowing, sir. So, Mr. Kumaresh, your doubt is clarified. How can we differentiate insulated lines and non-insulated lines in PNIDs? Question from Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. So normally what happens? This line number, this code, 
it will be clearly mentioned whether it is insulated or not. So from this line number, we can uh, easily identify. For example, everything will be captured in the line number. So, so this is the line number, sir. Here they have given M. That is the insulation type. So in line number itself, we'll identify whether insulation is there or not and what is the thickness of the insulation. Everything we can identify from the legends. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Kindly post in the chat box or you can unmute and post. I hope uh, no more questions. So let me move to the yeah. One more question from Mr. Johnson. How do we differentiate electrical insulation and steam insulation? Project you can see it is E. We have given E for electrical tracing. So from this line number itself, everything can be understood. So here we have given E. That is electrical insulation. Electrical tracing. Here there is no tracing. Here there is tracing. So with this E means electrical tracing. Line number itself, we can identify what type of tracing is given in the line. Right. Any other, any more questions? For one minute before we close. Don't show whether someone is typing. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I think no more questions from the participants. So we move to the closing session and thank you Mr. Shivakumar for thank you, starting from the basic fundamentals of uh, uh, differentiating between a process flow diagram and a P and ID. Uh, how symbols are used, what are the abbreviations that we use in P and ID uh, and then how do we do the stream numbering and how do we uh, arrange the equipments. And then you talked about the winterization protection requirements and how do you show it in a P and ID. Uh, and then finally, how do after preparing, how do we read a P and ID? A complicated diagram uh, that you took up with a selective explanation looks so simple. So hopefully if for those who are new to reading P and IDs, when you try to look at your drawing, it may not be as simple as uh, it appeared to be, but definitely you can slowly uh, catch up with how to read a p and id and then move on uh, so a great thanks to mr k shivakumar for being with us today on sharing his, his knowledge on p and id's preparation and reading on behalf of uh, national safety council kerala chapter and on behalf of hsc forum a big thank you for to mr shivakumar from high fluids engineering chennai Thank you, sir. Thanks Thank to you. all. Yeah. Thanks to all participants. We had 65 participants today uh, joining for this program. Uh, in fact, we are not very sure because uh, for senior people, this subject looks so simple and elementary. Uh, but we thought that it was we add a lot of value to the young engineers who are new to the uh, factories and system. Uh, but we see a lot of, uh, of people who are logged in with a lot of experience as well as youngsters. Many, many thanks to all the participants for the active support rendered to HSC Forum's uh, safety webinar series. Not only this, but also in the past few days, we have been conducting various diverse topics on QRA, on electrical safety, NEC 2023, on uh, 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 various topics, which uh, definitely would have added value to the respective discipline. And each of these talks were quite well represented. Uh, by by the participation. So on behalf of National Safety Council and HSC Forum, a big thanks to all the participants who have given encouraging response to the webinar series. Looking forward to your active support in future also. Thank you all. Thank you very much.
we now log off. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, isometrics uh, uh, drawing uh, we will consider, Mr. Reddy. Uh, uh, we will see. Can, can, kindly share your number and let's uh, speak and uh, talk to each other and then understand what is the requirement, and then you can look at things.